Hello scholars, today we will be looking at chapter 15, The Chocolate Room, and lesson four of Reader's Workshop. Our teaching point is, when you are an expert on a character, you understand them inside and out. To further this, think about what characters say and do. We will be looking at motivation and how characters respond in situations. Your material list for today is a relaxed silly face, an empathy sweater, a cozy empathy sweater where you can connect with the characters, and a pencil and a piece of paper to take any jots on ideas or questions you have. Thank you. As we begin our reading, scholars, I want to share and ask you how you're feeling about our characters so far. I don't know about you all, but I am really connecting with Charlie. I feel like he's my friend. I'm rooting for him. I want him to do well. How do you feel? Characters can be a best friend. When you know a person really well, you understand them. Not just that you know them, but you understand them. I've talked to you guys before about an example of my sister and I. When she responds a certain way, it's not only that I see she feels mad, sad, or excited, but I understand why and how she's feeling those things. That's what we're getting to talk about today, scholars, how to really understand your characters and know them like someone close to you. So we're gonna do a little facial recognition game here. This is where you need your silly face on. Put your silly face on, rub your cheeks, relax. All right. Scholars, look at the first picture right here, number one. And what emotion do you think this horse is telling us? What emotion is he saying? Ah! <laughs> he might be laughing. This horse looks like he's laughing. So scholars, we can maybe assume there was a, they were horsing around in the corral and they're having a laugh, like I hope you are now. We can look at their nonverbals to try to understand characters, the way they respond. Let's go to picture two. Picture two, this little pug here. What do you think this pug is feeling? Aw, Puggo looks sad. Poor little pup. <laughs> so we connect with our characters to connect with the story as well. Finally, three. What do you think this little guy is feeling as he's bounding across fields? He looks really excited to me. So when you see a character that's excited, you might think, well, why? Why are they so excited? And I look around and I read in context clues and I say, well, if I was a dog and if I was in a beautiful meadow running my heart out, I would probably feel really excited too. It helps you empathize. There's your empathy sweater. Hope you have it on to empathize with the characters. So why is it important to understand our characters? It helps you connect to the story, helps you learn a lesson. What is that story trying to teach you? And it can also help us predict what will happen next. Speaking of understanding and predicting scholars, I want you to think about what kind of employees would Mr. Wonka have working in his factory? And what kind of fantastic inventions do you think lies ahead for our golden ticket winners? We're going to get started reading chapter 15, The Chocolate Room. Grab your text and follow along. An important room, this, cried Mr. Wonka, 
taking a bunch of keys from his pocket and slipping one into the keyhole of the door. This is the nerve center of the whole factory, the heart of the whole place. And so beautiful. I insist upon my rooms being beautiful. I can't abide ugliness in factories. In we go, then. But do be careful, my dear children. Don't lose your heads. Don't get overexcited. Keep very calm. Mr. Wonka opened the door. Five children and nine grown-ups pushed their way in. And oh, what an amazing sight it was Now that now met their eyes. They were looking down upon a lovely valley. There were green meadows on either side of the valley. And along the bottom of it, there flowed a great brown river. What is more, there was a tremendous waterfall halfway along the river, a steep cliff over which water curled and rolled in a solid sheet, and then went crashing down into a boiling, churning whirlpool of froth and spray. Below the waterfall, and this was the most astonishing sight of all, a whole mass of enormous glass pipes were dangling down into the river from somewhere high up in the ceiling. They really were enormous, those pipes. They must have been a, there must have been a dozen of them at least, and they were sucking up this brownish muddy water from the river and carrying it away to, the, to goodness knows where. And because they were made of glass, you could see the liquid flowing and bubbling along inside them. And above the noise of the waterfall, you could hear the never-ending suck-suck-sucking sound of the pipes as they did their work. Graceful trees and bushes were growing along the riverbanks. Weeping willows and alders and tall clumps of rhododendrons with their pink and red and mauve blossoms. In the meadow, there was a thousand, there were thousands of buttercups. There, cried Mr. Wonka, dancing up and down and pointing his gold-topped cane at the great brown river. It's all chocolate. Every drop of that river is hot melted chocolate of the finest quality. The very finest quality. There's enough chocolate in there to fill every bathtub in the entire country. And all the swimming pools as well. Isn't that terrific? And just look at my pipes. They suck up the chocolate and carry it away to all the other rooms in the factory where it is needed. Thousands of gallons an hour, my dear children. Thousands and thousands of gallons. The children and their parents were too flabbergasted to speak. They were staggered. They were dumbfounded. They were bewildered and dazzled. They were completely bowed over by the, by the hugeness of the whole thing. They simply stood and stared. The waterfall is most important, Mr. Wonka went on. It mixes the chocolate. It churns it up. It pounds it and beats it. It makes it light and frothy. No other factory in the world mixes its chocolate by waterfall. Ha! But it's the only way to do it properly. The only way. And do you like my trees? He cried, pointing with his stick. And my lovely bushes? Don't you think they look pretty? I told you I hated ugliness. And of course, they're all edible all made of something different and delicious. And do you like my meadows? Do you like my grass and my buttercups? The grass you are standing on, my dear little ones, is made of a new kind of soft minty sugar that I have just invented. I call it sludge. Try a blade, please do. It's delectable. Automatically, everyone bent down and picked up and picked one blade of grass. Everybody, that is, except Augustus Gloop, who took a big handful. 
and Violet Beauregard, who, before tasting her blade of grass, took the piece of world-record-breaking chewing gum out of her mouth and stuck it carefully behind her ear. "'Isn't it wonderful?' whispered Charlie. "'Hasn't it got a wonderful taste, Grandpa?' "'I could eat the whole field!' said Grandpa Joe, grinning with delight. "'I could go round on all fours like a cow and eat every blade of grass in the field!' "'Try buttercup!' cried Mr. Wonka. "'They're even nicer!' Suddenly, the air was filled with screams of excitement. The screams came from Veruca Salt. She was pointing frantically to the other side of the river. Look! Look over there! She screamed. What is it? It's, he's moving! He's walking! It's a little person! It's a little man! Down there, below the waterfall! Everybody stopped picking buttercups and stared across the river. She's right, Grandpa, cried Charlie. It is a little man. Can you see him? I see him, Charlie, said Grandpa Joe excitedly. And now everybody started shouting at once. There's two of them. Oh my gosh, so there is. There's more than two. There's one, two, three, four, five. What are they doing? Where did they come from? Who are they? Children and parents alike rushed down to the edge of the river to get a closer look. Aren't they fantastic? No higher than my knee. Look at their funny long hair. The tiny men, they were no larger than medium-sized dolls, had stopped what they were doing, and now they were staring back across the river at the visitors. One of them pointed towards the children. And then he whispered something to the other four, and all five of them burst into peals of laughter. But they can't be real people, Charlie said. Of course they are real people, Mr. Wonka answered. They're Oompa Loompas!